I'm Robert Lansing. During the past few years, I've become fairly well acquainted with the United States Air Force and its mission through different parts that I've played on television and motion pictures. Although the primary mission of the United States Air Force is, of course, national defense, there are other Air Force activities that have a dramatic bearing on our lives. A specific Air Force accomplishment I'm going to talk about is Air Force support of our Civil Air Patrol. The Civil Air Patrol is an Air Force auxiliary made up of thousands of civilians who give of their time, their efforts, their skills in finding and rescuing people who are lost or injured. The story you're about to see will give you an insight into how those rescue missions are organized and carried out by the men and women of the Civil Air Patrol. Yeah? Major Crawford? Yeah? Major Crawford, this is Major Brown, Western Rescue Center, Hamilton Air Force Base. Sorry to wake you at this hour, but we have a mission for you. Are you ready to copy? Ready. I've got a November 7197 Alpha, a Cessna 172, two personnel on board. Aircraft departed Riverside, California, 2300 Zulu hours yesterday. Destination? Scottsdale, Arizona. The aircraft is white with green and yellow trim. The pilot was Dr. Richard Donnelly. The passenger, Dr. Raymond Matthews, both from Scottsdale. Another job for the mechanics, the salesmen, the plumbers, the volunteers of the Civil Air Patrol. Another overdue plane to find. Possibly lost in a wilderness so vast it will be like looking for a needle in a haystack. When the plane didn't arrive Scottsdale, the pilot's wife, Mrs. Donnelly, called Phoenix Flight Service. Phoenix issued the all knot. We have completed ramp checks at Riverside and Scottsdale. Results negative. Other ramp checks are in progress en route. Now it's yours. And Major, good luck. Thanks. Five hours to dawn. Five hours to man and set up a mission headquarters. Five hours to alert pilot and crews, have them briefed, and ready for the search. Don't tell me. Only one guy would call me at this hour. Mike, I want you as my assistant. Captain Michael Riley at your service, sir. Okay, Tom. Let's have it. Let's try and get our aircraft and crews at Chino in four hours and try and get at least one with night weather electronic search capability for an ASAP launch. Just in case Dr. Donnelly had a locator beacon. Can do? Sure can. But what's the story? Later. Now, put two planes into the air at first light on an initial route search. Okay, Tom. How many bodies for headquarters? Mm, six should hack it. Me, you, ground ops, comm, IO, and admin types. Okay? Now, here's a story. A Cessna 172 with two aboard departed Riverside. From then on, we don't know what the hell happened. First light. Two aircraft are launched on an initial route search for a pilot who did not file a flight plan. His most probable route Riverside Direct Thermal. Thermal Direct Blythe. Blythe Direct Buckeye, Arizona. Buckeye Direct Scottsdale. Until we get more information, 
we must assume that Dr. Donnelly flew this route. We'll start by covering 10 miles each side the assumed flight route, but we'll concentrate here and give the area first priority. Mike, will you brief the grid assignments? Thanks, Tom. Gordy, you have the aircraft and experience. You'll take grid 236. You inform them, lay out a plan of attack, and then turn them over to Mike Riley. He gives them the specifics and the detailed briefings on individual grid assignments. You can't just launch aircraft into the air and expect to achieve any meaningful results. The crews have to be informed. You stress flying safety, review scanning techniques, brief them on the weather to expect, go over the search patterns and all the other ingredients so vital to a well-organized mission. Only then do you flash the green light. Initial search plans laid out and the search planes in the air, mission headquarters can now tie up the loose ends, seek more information, and begin piecing together the puzzle. Mike, what have you got? Well, Norton and Edwards report the weather was generally fair to poor last night between Riverside and Arizona. However, there were some snow flurries uh, reported in the San Bernardino Mountains. Now, Flight Service reports pyreps indicating moderate turbulence in the primary search area. Find out how much endurance he had when he departed Riverside. Let's find out about his habits and skill. What nav aids did he have, and did he know how to use them? Did he panic under stress? Did he have a history of any sickness or illness? <laughs> goes out. All points bulletin. Richard, here's the teletype that should get right out. Okay. San Bernardino to all units, be on the lookout for a downed aircraft. Somewhere between Riverside and Scottsdale, Arizona. Aircraft described as a cream with green trim. Cessna 172. Serial number 7179 A. Adam. KMD 453, clear. Riverside to Scottsdale, to every town between, in the desert, in the mountains. Hey, Ron, I just received an APB about a down Cessna 172. It took off hmm. from Riverside and route to Scottsdale. Civil Air Patrol ground teams spread out questioning, trying to get answers. Two prominent Arizona physicians were reported missing early this morning when their light aircraft was reported overdue on a flight to Scottsdale, Arizona. Out there, 10 million people. If only 10 can give you a lead, or even just one. I got this information from his wife. When uh, Dr. Donnelly left Scottsdale, he planned to divert to Tucson en route to Riverside. Hmm. Let's check it out on the map. Tucson Flight Service says he filed a flight plan to uh, Riverside and topped his tanks with a fuel endurance of five hours. But get this, Riverside has no record of his refueling and all the fuel vendors concur. At least he did something right at Tucson. Where does that put them? Well, here somewhere. He had less fuel than we thought. Possibly enough to get him 175 miles max. Let's call this the area of maximum possibility based on his fuel, and this the most probable area. So let's check fuel vendors all along this route. On the map, a mere few inches from a small plane the vast, hostile expanse. How did he react? Darkness closing in. 
fuel running low, some turbulence in the valleys. In trouble, did he continue flying east toward Blythe, or did he reverse course, or did he search the valley floor for a place to land, or did he fly into the side of a mountain? Let's concentrate coverage a little more. Reassign Andy from Blythe and ask Western Rescue if all ramp and fuel checks have been completed. Then update them on leads. Highway Patrol, Mrs. Davis. I don't know if it's the airplane you're looking for. 0900 I saw a small airplane. Leads resulting from press, TV, and radio uh, coverage radio coming in. Uh, from people who saw a plane or thought they saw one. Yesterday. People trying to help. Okay, ma'am, can I have your name and number? Okay, and thank you very much for calling. Highway Patrol, Mrs. Davis. A Learjet near Palm Springs. A scheduled 747 over Big Bear. A U3 near Idlewild. Hi, Bob. How's it going? Oh, it's really bad. Terrible. What can I do for you? I understand you saw a low-flying aircraft around here yesterday. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a Cessna 172. It went down right over the horizon yesterday around dusk. The right type of aircraft, the right time frame, but the wrong color, the wrong owner, the wrong plane. Some of these leads get pretty wild, Tom, but we try and check them all out. The results, a big fat zero. Ground operations, Major Salvucci. A white and red beach craft. Hello, D. Hi, Major. Here's what we have on Dr. Donnelly so far. According to his son, he was a good pilot, but had less than 300 hours experience. Here's one. I quote, For my dough, Dr. Donnelly couldn't fly a kite. Unquote. <laughs> That's the opinion of Dr. Matthew's brother. Riverside associate said he had a couple of cocktails, but seemed sober when he took off. Then why in the hell didn't he file a flight plan and refuel? Now this may help, Major. A flight instructor who has flown cross-country with Dr. Donnelly reports that he sometimes fails to lean his mixture. Now that would reduce his range and reinforce this as our primary area. Western Rescue completes all checks, and Arizona is thanked and relieved of the search. It's three hours now to dark. Three hours before the day's search ends. Air crews continue their sorties, recover at Chino, and then fly again. They check out any clue that might lead to a find. White Bear 755, this is Brown Bear 135. I see a break in the trees, and I'm going down for a look. Headquarters, this is Brown Bear 135. I can't make it out. You better get ground crew out to grid 236 Charlie, on the west side of 10,000 foot peak, near the river. Uh, Roger, White Bear 135, copy. You've squeezed every minute out of daylight. Then it's time to bring them home. You get them together so you can compile what was accomplished during the day. Today's coverage in the mountains, 10%. In the desert and valleys, 50%. You add it all up. You prepare the assignments and plans for the next day. the list of replacements, Major. Oh. Thank you, Judy. Here you go. From the list of lawyers, clerks, plumbers, salesmen, and mechanics, you select the replacements for those who can't make it the next day. The press demands you? word on the latest developments and gets it. In exchange, they give you saturation okay, coverage. Right now. Have there been any civilian fatalities reported? Do you know where the airplane was going? Tom? Yes, Cheryl? 
you come and answer a few questions, please? Sure. One thing, Major. Can you tell us if you expect to find anyone alive? Gentlemen, let me put it this way. We certainly hope so. Today, our people flew 48 sorties. Some risked their own lives. We will continue to fly sorties until there is no longer any hope. Does that answer your question? The search area is expanded. Areas of highest probability receive first priority. 12.30 hours. Thank you. We'll follow that up. Hey, Tom? Mike? Yeah. Los Angeles reports that a Delta 747 picked up a weak signal beam on Victor 264. Now, that's about 55 miles east of the Pomona Vortec. Where does that put him? Well, let's see. That should put them just about right there. If that was Dr. Donnelly, how did he get way up there? Never mind how he got there. Check it out. Hit grids 208 and 209 hard. Reassign aircraft. Move in the ground teams. And keep your fingers crossed. This may be the lead you've been waiting for. We are reassigning you to grid 209A and listen for a beacon that's been reported in the area. A rancher in the Yucca Valley recalls the morning news broadcast. Two days ago at dusk, he saw an aircraft circling at low altitude, engine sputtering. A Cessna, white with green trim. He remembers the description even to the tail numbers 97A. This had to be it. Concentrate on grid 209A with aircraft and ground crews. Give it everything you've got. We're getting hot. Advise Western Rescue. Have them alert a rescue chopper for a possible recovery. Alert the ambulance. Alert the medics. Have them ready to go in. Don't overlook anything that might be a clue. The glint of sunlight on metal, broken branches, anything. This is White Bear 755, over. I've got him, 209 on the grid. It's a Cessna 172, tail number 71, 
97 Alpha, two passengers. Both are alive. I believe one will require medical attention. Hey, hey, they're all right. They're okay. They're all right. They're all right. They're all right. They're all right. California found them this time. Next time it could be Colorado, Louisiana, Maine, or any other of the 52 Civil Air Patrol wings in any one of the other 49 states in Puerto Rico. Now call on the civilian pilots, the dedicated guys who risked their lives and aircraft. Let them go back to their families and to their jobs in the banks, in the offices, in the stores, and in the plant, knowing that what they did today will be remembered by two men and their families as long as they live. And then when everyone is checked out, you two can go home.